Hey, it's Bob Baker here. Welcome to part nine of 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. I keep cranking these things out every day. You keep watching them. Thank you very much. You know, it's occurred to me as I'm uh, going through this list and recording these videos and audio podcasts for you that while it wasn't the original intention actually a lot of the material that I am sharing with you in these videos could very well end up in the book called The Empowered Artist. After all that is what this daily series is about. It's all part of a fan funding campaign that I'm doing for a new book called The Empowered Artist. And I'm hoping that you're getting a lot of value out of these videos and that it will inspire you to take a look at the campaign page that runs through July 2nd, 2014. If you've already contributed and a lot of people have, I thank you. If not, please go and take a look at it. You can contribute from as little as $10 up to much more. And if you're familiar with how these fan funding campaigns work, there are many levels of support and the higher dollar amount that you contribute, the more perks that you get. So find the link on this page somewhere and go take a closer look at that. I really appreciate your help. So for this ninth installment, I want to talk about something that few people really think about, but I think is an incredibly important, kind of ties into uh, yesterday's uh, lesson on uh, positive thinking and firming up your filter, but it's the power of questions. And it may seem kind of odd to you at first, but let me explain. So pretty much as we go through life as human beings, we're always, whether consciously or unconsciously, we're asking ourselves questions. For instance, you might ask yourself, well, what do I have to eat in the house? And your brain starts going through a list. Well, I got leftover lasagna that I could warm up. I've got uh, ramen noodles in the closet. Oh, I've also got that frozen steak that I could thaw out. The same thing goes for if you have an interest to eat out somewhere. You ask, well, where should I go? What am I in the mood for? And you go, well, there's the Mexican place down the street. There's the Italian place down the highway. You ask a question and your brain starts feeding you back answers, kind of like a computer. So if you've never thought about this before, this is a good time to realize that there are empowering questions and there are disempowering questions. When it comes to your pursuit uh, as an artist, as a musician, as a writer, what kind of questions are you asking yourself? Now here's some ones that I often hear creative people asking. It's stuff like, why does the local music scene or the art scene suck so much in this town? Or, why doesn't anybody support the arts in this blah blah city? You would fill in the blah blah with the name of your city in case you didn't catch that. Or, why don't these people recognize my genius? So think about that. When you ask a question like one of those, your brain assumes that it's valid and it starts searching for answers. So in the case of, why does the local music scene in this town suck? Your brain will go, well, it could be that nobody gives a damn, uh, maybe you're lousy. You know, it feeds back the answers to the specific question that you asked. And when it's a lousy question like that, the answers are really lousy. You suck, nobody cares, you gotta have money, you gotta know somebody. All these really stupid answers come flying back at you. So why not ask a better question? With the local scene, how about, well, I know the local scene isn't perfect, but what can I do to make it better? What kind of an event could I create to stir up some activity in the local music or art scene? That's a more empowering question, because it leads to you thinking of solutions and something that's productive instead of just wallowing in the negativity of what's wrong. Instead of asking, why don't they recognize my brilliance? Instead, ask a question, what can I do to demonstrate my creative genius? That leads to a whole set of answers that will excite and potentially empower you. Now here'd be a good one. What could I do in my specific creative field that would really blow people's minds? Now that is an awesome question to ask because you think big, you think crazy, you think what would be different and cool that I could do that it could get attention, get people talking about me, maybe purchasing my stuff. What a great question. And this even works on a more subtle level, like a lot of people will ask questions about what do I have to do to get into this gallery or into this music venue or into this bookstore? It's a good question because it could lead to solutions and creative ways to get in there. But what are you really after? Is your end goal really just to get into a specific gallery or to get into a particular brick and mortar building? I don't think so. To me, a better question would be, how could I reach more people with my art? Because isn't that the ultimate reason you want to get into the gallery or the music venue or the bookstore so that you can potentially reach more people? 
it's sort of tunnel vision to think that the only way to reach more people is through these specific types of things. But when you ask a broader question of how can I reach more people, how can I touch more people with my art, then your possibilities are expanded. Here's a little story that I shared uh, in a new book that I wrote called The DIY Career Manifesto. Many years ago, when I was in my 20s, I started doing stand-up comedy, and I started going uh, to the uh, open mic night at the Funny Bone here in my hometown of St. Louis. And you were lucky if you got four or five minutes on stage maybe three times a month. They had weekly open mics. A lot of people showed up for them. So if you were lucky, you got... 15 minutes maybe on stage for an entire month and with comedy it takes a lot of stage time to hone your craft so while a lot of people were saying why is the local comedy scene suck in this town and why doesn't the funny bone do this and that for us being victims I asked a more empowering question I asked myself well what do I really want here okay I want more stage time so how can I get more stage time practicing my comedy and it led to me thinking about this little bar, South St. Louis, it still exists, but back then in the 80s, uh, there was a couple that owned it, and I had just met them, and I went in and I said, hey, what do you got going on here on Wednesday nights during the week? He says, well, nothing, we're open, we're paying a bartender and a server, but uh, we don't got a whole lot of people coming in, we don't have any live music. I said, what if I put on a, a live comedy show for you. It wouldn't cost you anything. We'd charge five bucks at the door. I would organize it. I'd get my open mic night friends to come down here and perform. I would MC it. They loved the idea. And for like a year and a half, I did the Wednesday night comedy show at Off-Broadway. And I got a ton of stage time, honed my craft, and eventually I was working paid gigs a couple years later at the Funny Bone. That wouldn't have happened if I just wallowed in what was and the negativity of being frustrated. But I asked a better question, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do is ask better questions about your potential and your growth as an artist. Sound good? I guess that's a form of a question there. No Jeopardy jokes, I'm sorry, in the form of a question. Okay, so let me know your thoughts on this whole topic of asking better questions. Do you find yourself asking empowering questions or disempowering in questions? Disempowering in questions. There's a tongue twister for you. We'd love to know your thoughts. Wherever you can comment on the page, feel free to do so. And also, please spread the word about my current fan funding campaign for my upcoming book called The Empowered Artist. Click the link somewhere on the page. It'll take you to more information about it, especially if you're watching this before July 2nd, 2014. It's still going. You can still support it in many different ways. If it's after that date, click the link anyway because I'll show you the progress that's made. Maybe the book's available by now. There's other events and sort of things that I have cooking in my active brain here about things I could do to take over the world. So please join me in that effort. All right, I'm getting a little loopy, so I should probably bring this one to a close. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another empowering message for artists just like you. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now.